Oh, happiness. What exactly is it and why do we have it backward? By the end of this video, you will know three ways of increasing your happiness on a day-to-day -day basis as I parse through new Oxford research for you. This is a cursory looksy with me, Professor Meatball, and human who will have you remember that cursory means a similar word to perfunctory, desultory, casual, and superficial. This is not going to be a thorough analysis of Oxford's research, but rather a view into it so you don't have to read the whole paper. If we want to be happier the meatball way, I see there's three avenues to take. We can change how we think, how we spend our time, or the external factors of our life. Too often are we too focused on the third thing, changing the way we look, changing the way we dress, and the people that we interact with, and superficially trying to achieve and attain more. In fact, there are three ways that you will be able to see in this video of how to become more suited to happiness. Now, get out of my snout and bring on the human. Poof. Hi. Welcome to a cursory look-see. Research from Michael Plant at Oxford says that we have a lot of happiness ideas turned all the way around. So I'm here to give you a cursory look-see to make sure that you get the right details without having to look through the entire academic paper. Plant posits that there... <laughs> Plant posits that there is a... Hedonic treadmill. ...that humans have to run across in order to keep a happy balance between happiness and unhappiness. <laughs> <laughs> this hedonic treadmill or adaptation that we constantly have to jump back on is what keeps us going after a bad breakup or what makes us feel like everything is fine even after winning the lottery or getting a great promotion. At some point, human satisfaction and happiness kind of plummets because we have a way of normalizing what happens to us. Isn't that right? Are you happy? You're crying, I can't tell. A great real-world representation of the hedonic adaptation is the Easterlin Paradox. It's an idea that in the last 60 years, human satisfaction has basically stagnated. Even though we have a lot more technology, a lot more comfort, and a lot more consistency in life, we still somehow haven't found any more satisfaction in a day-to-day -day ongoings. Cavemen used to wonder where their next bone they would gnaw on would come from without a single thought of their AC or their Wi-Fi router not working. And yet, we seem not much happier than them. This leads to the second idea that we get wrong about happiness. We, this leads to the second idea that we get wrong about happiness. We don't have a good understanding of exactly how one event is going to make us happy or unhappy. This is called affective forecasting. An affect is what psychologists call the emotions that we face when a certain event happens to us. When surveyors were asked about whether or not they'd be happier living in California or some east coast state like New Hampshire? New Hampshire? Maine? Maryland? Even Californians say that they would be happier living in California. Why? Because of the focalism. Why? Because of focalism or the focus illusion. If you're taking notes at home, know that this is the halfway point. If you have any questions for me, Professor Meatball, I'll be having office hours for one whole week after this video goes up, so leave any questions below. Focusing illusion is when we think about a given event's effect on us, we only think about what we would most focus on, such as California's nice weather, or the fact that everyone there is groovy and eats boba and, po and drinks poke and everything like that. The main point is that we don't think about every single given effect that would eventually change our affect. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? It's really expensive to live here. 
It's really expensive to live here. It's so damn expensive to live here. The expenses and day-to-day -day troubles of living in, the, in California, such as the fires that go on day-to-day, uh, small details that are cons of living in California are not exactly focused on. That's why we have a bad prediction of how this is going to affect our affect. But the way that we forecast our emotions is not only bad, it ultimately ends up being wrong. Take for example, a bad breakup. After a breakup, you would ultimately have to think, hey, I never really liked that person anyway, or maybe I wasn't actually happy living on the day to day. You'll find other reasons to be happy and normalize whoop, back onto the treadmill itself. This is called immune neglect. Eventually, you would be able to forget why you thought the event was gonna make you so unhappy in the first place. Then you overestimate how much that effect was gonna make you unhappy. Therefore, all that time you spent trying to avoid that unhappy event ultimately actually did not reflect how unhappy you would eventually be because of the effect. Did that make sense? Let's give you a nice day. Okay. This leads to the third idea of why affective forecasting is not good. Because our memories are not good. Memory is bad. That's what I wrote in here in this notebook. A big way of how one researcher found out that our memories are not super good is by the surgeon Daniel Kahneman. He realized that some people preferred longer, more painful surgeries that ended up less painful towards the end than a surgery that was short and less painful overall. This is because humans really have a good understanding of what happens at the very end, and they don't really remember everything else. This is called the peak end effect. The peak end effect goes hand in hand with another effect called the duration neglect. Ultimately, that party last night that you thought was super duper cool, ultimately might be because you're just remembering the end of it, or you're not really remembering the entire duration, and you forget the small details of like how someone might have cried on you laughing or might have puked on your shoes. I hope you took diligent notes or just pressed the pause button because these captions are gonna go away in three, two, one, and they're gone. So the biggest way to be happy in the year 2020 is to practice three main things that I'll put up here. CBT, MBSR, and positive psychology. Ah, uh, let someone with a dog turret explain. Mindfulness is starting to become popular, but the other two are basically unknown. CPT helps people to understand their thoughts and stop negative thinking patterns. MBSR helps people accept rather than fight negative emotions and so reduce the suffering they cause. And positive psychology trains people to find more positive emotions, such as by encouraging people to be grateful. I'll leave links in the description below so that you can get started today. Remember, with a few minutes each day, you can rewire the way your brain works. Because our memories are so blah, I'd suggest you start tracking your happiness either with an app or with pen and paper. This'll let you know what you enjoy and what you should reallocate more of your time to. Not to just stress a fine point, but there are many benefits of being happy in case you're not convinced. Humans are more likely to get human married, to get promoted, to earn more, to have more friends, to be healthier, to live longer, etc. These are all good reasons for you to pursue your own happiness today, thanks to me, Professor Meatball. Once again, this has only been a cursory look, see, so if you need more information, if you need more, all the details might not be here, but Michael Plant has all his details on his Oxford page. So, I'll leave that link below, please check it out to learn more about your own happiness, and join again next time for more. Let's see what the human's up to. And one more thing, remember, when you have a given understanding of how happy or sad an event might make you, just know that you might be really overestimating some pretty small things and underestimating the bigger ones. Woo! Join us next time for another cursory look -see. Ah, I truly enjoyed having you as my students. 
If you liked that, we will be having more Data Science Bootstrap Bootcamp later on this week, as well as another entertaining and educational thought piece or sketch. Stay tuned!